Hi and welcome back to my channel. I thought that I would post intermittent um, book reviews in occasionally, especially when a book really hits the spot with me. Um, I had a couple of rough months. I've talked about it on this channel already, but I'm really getting back into the groove of things with reading and with blogging and even with this channel. So I thought this book is really good. It came out on January 12th. I am putting the book cover up on the screen, The Perfect Guest by Emma Rao. Now, I read a book by hers last year, which was called The Au Pair. She, and that book made her a USA Today best-selling author. So she's definitely going places. So when The Perfect Guest came out, came up for review, which was about five or six months ago, but unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to read it until just the other day. But when it came into my queue, I knew that I was definitely going to want to read it. And I'm really glad that I did. And I just posted the review on my blog. So in the description box below, I will put my blog link. And I will also put the link for the Amazon book if you decide that you want to take a good look at it. Again, it's called The Perfect Guest by Emma Rao. It's published by Berkeley, so I want to thank Berkeley for this book for review. It's a mystery slash thriller, and I read it as a Kindle electronic arc. It was 368 pages, and I gave it five stars. So basically, I want to say that it's a dual timeline book, and I love dual timeline books because what I find is you've got two stories that you know correlate in some way and you also know at some point they're going to connect so my eagerness in reading a book that's a mystery is always intriguing but when it's dual timeline you know that it's going to have an extra edge because you're looking for that connection and that's what i was looking for with this book so the first timeline that the book covers is 1988 and it's about a girl named Beth Soames, which is S-O-A-M-E-S, so I think it's Soames. Um, her life fell apart. Uh, she lost her family in one fell swoop and made a quick foray to a children's home, but was, uh, her, I, I don't know if she actually made it but there, but her aunt did take her in. And then, even though she was taken in by a blood relative, she was then taken in by a family and I think their name, did I write their name down? I think I did. Uh, no, I didn't write their name down, but she was taken in by a family and the family was the parents and a daughter who was the same age as Beth and her name was Nina. Now, Nina and Beth hit it off really well, at least for the most part. Yes, they had their conflicts and those conflicts come up throughout the story, but Oddly enough, uh, Nina's grandfather, who I believe was the father's father, lived across the pond in the U.S. This book takes place in the U.K. And whenever he would come to visit the family, they would ask Beth to pretend that she was Nina. Now, up until this age, Nina's age now, the grandfather never met Nina. So what I looked at in this book was motive. That was the key word for me while I was reading this book. What was the motive behind Nina's parents asking Beth to pretend that she was Nina whenever the grandfather came to England? That was the curious thing to me. And I loved being kept on tenterhooks throughout the whole book, wondering why. Then the book flips to modern day 2019 and in those chapters we meet a woman named Sadie Langton. Now Sadie Langton is a struggling actress and she was hired to actually she was invited to a murder party at a place named Raven Hall. Now Raven Hall happened to be the house that Nina's parents owned and where Sadie was living excuse me, where Beth was living after she lost her parents. So now it's 2019 and there's an invite to this place called Raven Hall. And what it is, is it's a murder party. 
And in this murder party, Sadie has been given a very specific role. She's given a suitcase with specific clothing items. She's given lines that she has to read and a role that she has to play. So Sadie wonders who is the actual host and who are the other guests. Along the way, however, chilling things start to happen and Sadie knows something is way up. So while I'm so while I'm assimilating Sadie's experiences, the story shifts back to Beth and to Nina, and that drama is playing. And then again the thing with the grandfather. So again, motive. What is the motive behind the past and what is the motive with with what's going on presently? with Sadie at this murder party. Now, I thought it was a very thrilling story. I love the back and forth of it. I, I've always enjoyed that aspect when a story is written and it didn't matter whether I was reading Beth's story or Sadie's story, I was fully invested. I was really pulled into all of the drama that took place. And I also loved being led to search for that connection. What is the connection between the two stories and when would I realize it? As a matter of fact, Shalene, the color in Book Nook, I texted her and I said, Shalene, what's going on? She said, have you finished the book? And I said, no, I'm, I'm 88%. She says, well, I'm not gonna tell you. But yeah, I really wanted to know and I couldn't read fast enough and I was hoping Shalene would tell me, but nope, she wouldn't. So anyway, it was a really, really good book. It was chilling, it had my attention from beginning to end. It kept me reading straight through. There were no lags in the story, it was excellently, Lee written and it and it like I said it kept me grasping for the motives behind the two stories and behind everything that took place so this is only the second book that I read by Emma Rao but I highly recommend it all this time that I've been talking I will have stuck the uh, book cover up on the screen and I want to thank you for your time that's it bye bye <music>